That was pretty <laughs> snazzy, Heather. Yes, right? That was our new intro. I'm so happy that with it and it has like pink champagne just like what we would be drinking and yes. it looks like a beautiful party <laughs> so did you ever go to a wedding where they had the pink champagne fountain oh no i think that would be fancy <laughs> that was like that was the shit in, that was the top stuff like the 70s i think oh man Late 70s and you would do pink champagne in that type of fountain Oh my God. I kind of put your, put your glass under, you know, and of course you had the, you know, the bowl type glasses. Yes. You know, for champagne. And so you put your glass under there and then. So you don't want to stick your head under. You could. <laughs> and let me tell you places that had the champagne fountain or weddings that had the champagne fountain, they got out of control because oh. everyone is like shoving their glass under, they're drinking it and shoving their glass under oh, it again. Cause it's like, it, cause it's fun. It is fun. And then it also like you don't realize that pink that pink champagne actually has booze in it. And then later you're like, woo. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so Walmart sells a small pink champagne fountain. Do they? And I'm thinking about getting one for New Year's. Oh, that'd be super fun. I mean, like how big is like small? Is it like, you know, because I'm just, I it's know the like, big ones are know, probably huge. Like that. Well, so, I mean, it's got. It's kind of like those little chocolate fountains, but it's like yeah. a champagne fountain. Yeah. I can, I can deal with that. Although Tracy wants to put scotch in it instead oh. of. <laughs> instead that could of go off the rails really fast. <gasps> Holy cow. Yeah, that can get, get ugly fast. You have a pink champagne fountain and a scotch fountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone well, wins. Laura likes the idea of champagne. I think so too. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I, <laughs> that's got she's got Bojack Horseman on there or something. Yep, very nice. <laughs> so yes, um, cheers to you. I, I don't have pictures in my glass, but I think it, it motivated me to think about having some. So I might have to go find that or get some Moscato or something. You know, something cute. She says she also likes whiskey. I don't know about that. That might be a little bit much, too. So I'm using one of my birthday gifts that I got. Um, oh, yeah. One of my nieces got me a set of these teacups. Oh, I like the little they feet cute. They got the little bathtub feet on them. So is but, that what you drink? Oh, does it say something? Wine. <laughs> I was going to say it, if it was like a bathtub. It would be like bathtub gin or something. There is one that has gin and then vodka. And then there's one that says tequila. So you could have like anything you want, whenever you want. You're like, today it's a wine day. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I could be on my Zoom meeting going, having some tea. And then turn it around and go, it's wine. No. <laughs> that would be fabulous. I love it. It's a great gift. And yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. Mm. So had my, had my birthday. Happy Officially birthday, by the way. Really old. Yeah, no. You got a century. Go. Yeah, man. You got to know some cool shit by now. Yeah, you do. You you lie. <laughs> I know you know things. She drinks and knows things. This is the way it goes. So, did you have a good good you have a good birthday, Kara? I had an awesome birthday. So, it was 2 days of of birthday because <laughs> I had the friend birthday on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, which we did as kind of a run fest party. Super fun. <laughs> and then family party on Sunday. And so that was fun. It was, you know, my parents and my sister and um, oh, your mama says it was the best party ever. It was a lot of fun. My oh my and my mom made the food, so of course it was amazing. And yeah, and so then we had um a juggler come and perform and he did like amazing crazy ass stuff and it was fun and, and the kids liked it too because my grand nephew and nieces were there and oh man yeah so it was a good time we had a really good time so um are, are you going to continue partying through the rest of the month is that how it's supposed to go i mean it's a big birthday so i feel like you should keep well going. it is but my birthday month is done yeah oh yeah but well, that's not fair. You have your birthday at the end of the month. 
I have my birthday at the beginning of October, and then I just and you're like, like all month, all month, baby. So we should have started earlier for you. And I feel like since we missed that opportunity, we should start now <laughs> and then just go for the rest of the month. So that we way do that. you don't miss out. We or next that. year, twice as hard. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever you prefer, Kara, it's up to you. Yeah, we could do that. Or both. Seriously. Uh-huh. I just want to party. <laughs> it's that kind of year. Oh, so Yes. What else has been going on? Like you taking over the world. You turned 21 and now you can drink. Yep. That's exactly (laughs) right. I turned 21. Now I can drink. Good for you. (laughs) You know, I, I'm continuing to try to do better on my healthy eating and. (laughs) Yeah, I know me too, but. It's hard because there's so much delicious, awesome things everywhere. So I feel like for your birthday, though, you are entitled to eat whatever you want. And I did. And so as part of my gift, my sister got me a whole bunch of um, bags of nacho cheese Doritos and Cool oh. Ranch Doritos. Are you okay? Do you need help? <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I'm trying to, like, not go after them because um what happens with Doritos is I will like I will eat a bag I will eat a whole bag and then I will be sick for the next couple days this this might be the problem and the solution right there is um don't eat the whole bag even though it's hard maybe break them or or put them in mini bags like put them in little bags and once you eat that bag you can't have any more so you would think mini bags would be the solution, but instead I just eat like eight or nine mini bags. Oh, no, Kara. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I My problem isn't, you know, Doritos I can stop. Like I, I've always been able to stop, but it's like cookies and stuff like that. You know, like I'll, I'll oh, get see that. Eh, whatever. I know you're a sweet, you're a salty and I'm a sweet. So I'm just like, oh, like Oreos. I don't know. They're the grossest food. I know moderation. This is the voice of wisdom right here. Moderation is the key. But when I like eating something, it's like. See, sweets, I'm just like, whatever. I want chocolate and wine. I think that's like the perfect combination for me, like a nice dark red wine and dark chocolate. And I'll just like, it's like health food. (laughs) It's good for your heart. Speaking of combinations, there was a weird combination in the news today. What was the weird combination in the news today? Um, President Trump saying that he's a libertarian. <laughs> Wait, what? I missed that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been so, working hard today. I, I must have like it's the hard a headline to understand exactly what he's saying because the quote is completely hosed up. Um, but somewhere in there was him saying that he's kind of a libertarian. He's a little libertarian. He is a libertarian. Well, it's been a little libertarian. It sort of doesn't surprise me because all of a sudden he's a Republican a few years ago. And before that, he pretty much was like a Democrat. So I'm oh like, what God. can he be next? He, is he just randomly like, oh, today being a libertarian sounds good. I have no idea. But why would you say I that if you're president saw, of the United States? <laughs> I did see a helpful Venn diagram and it showed... <laughs> um. President Trump and Libertarian, and it showed where he overlapped. Oh. And it looked like this. <laughs> there was no overlap. There's no overlap. I was going to look no for um, the Venn diagram. Libertarian. I can't there spell no Arian. Venn diagram. Zero. Uh, zero. Yeah. My mom says he's still a Democrat, and he is. He is. He just see. I mean, I don't see any behavior, and I don't know why the Republicans are putting up with that. But that's okay. I mean, yeah, I think he's still a dumb in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's a populist Democrat. This is uh, my theory: is that he and Hillary were like flipping for like which role they're going to take. Hillary's like, I could be Democrat. Maybe I'm Republican. He's like, Me too. 
It's like, okay, I guess not. And he flips and he's like, I guess I'm a Republican. She's like, okay, I'm a Democrat then. <laughs> well, or maybe they were doing like a Freaky Friday thing where they swap. Swap brains. That would, well, and they're both kind of weird in the same way. I, I always thought they were in cahoots somehow. <laughs> they're like, Who, who's going to win? Let's flip. Okay. Right. Yeah. It was so close anyway. But we do have some good news. What's the good news? I have a ballot access update. <gasps> yeah. I love okay. It. So as of now, as of right now? four hours ago. Okay. Four hours ago. We currently have Joe Jorgensen and Spike Cohen on the ballot in 49 states plus D.C. And we're still on track to get that 50 plus D.C. New Hampshire is official this afternoon. Cool. Um, so Rhode Island is still gathering signatures and they're getting ready to turn them in. And in fact, um, our executive director of the Libertarian Party, Dan Fishman, headed out there to help them finish up. Oh, good. Um, I think last count they had 800 plus or minus signatures and they need a thousand. But of course, you know, you need way more than a thousand because yeah. you know how that goes. Oh, dear God. I hope yeah, they but they have. They have teams out there right now to help them finish up because if I remember correctly, I think they have to turn them in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Oh, okay. So they still have till tomorrow. Yep. Because when you're saying it's a little under, I'm like, no, it should be way, way over. <laughs> yep. So tomorrow when they turn in, I mean, we'll wait for the official word, but then it will be 50 states plus DC. And as a bonus... Uh, the Guam Election Commission confirmed that Joe Jorgensen will appear on their presidential advisory ballot. Now, they don't get to do electoral votes, but they do do like a presidential race on their ballot. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it shows who they're behind. Yeah, exactly. So they can they call it a presidential advisory ballot. Oh, OK. I love it. Especially like if things are totally tied. They're like, well. You know, this presidential advisory ballot, let's just, let's weigh it, tip it that direction. Yes. And also with our presidential ticket. So the Commission on Presidential Debate has announced their debate moderators and the debate dates. So the first one will be Tuesday, September 27th, 29th, 29th. sorry. Yep. Uh, and that will be Chris Wallace, October 7th will be the vice presidential debate, and that will be of Susan Page. October 15th is Steve Scully, and October 22nd is Kristen Walker. But here is the not happy part of that. So in order for our candidate to be on the debate stage, there are five polls that they need to get 15% in. Right. And it's the ABC, Washington Post, CNN, CNN poll, the NBC, um, Wall Street Journal, the Fox News poll, and then the NPR, Marist poll. Yeah. However, <laughs> George Jorgensen is not listed as an option on any of those polls. So you can't even put in your preference for her. So they're going to use those polls. She has to hit 15%, but they will not list her as an option on the polls. And I got called for one of those polls. Yep. How did it go? And <laughs> they asked me to pick between two. And I said, no, I'm voting for Joe Jorgensen. And they said, no, you have to pick between these two. And I said, I am not voting for either of them. I am voting for Joe Jorgensen. And they said, well, you have to pick one of the other two or we have to list you as undecided. And I said, I am not undecided. I am yeah. voting for Joe Jorgensen. And my probability on a scale of one to five of voting is a five. Yeah. I will be there unless I am dead and I will be voting for Joe Jorgensen. And they marked me down as undecided and ended the call. Oh, that is just so unfair. I don't even. And I wonder how many people, when they're polling, 
say they're voting for someone else and they're like, no, you have to pick between one of these two. And so then they do. They're like, okay, whatever. But it's bullying, you know, it it's, they're, they're forcing people to say things that they never would have picked. Exactly. So what can people do? Um, so, I mean, you can contact and try to get these polls. And when you are polled, you can try to push back. Um, you can try to contact the presidential commission, but their voicemail is full and has been full because they're not taking the messages off because they don't want people calling and contacting them. I mean, they literally just don't care. They don't care. They don't, do they? And then their position is, well, you know, there's over 200 candidates for president. We can't include them all. Somebody should make some really good memes about this so we can pass them around everywhere. There are. Good. There are really good memes about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. over. So if you hit, like, um, you know, either the either Joe Jorgensen's or Spike's page or any of the, the – um, Joe Jorgensen dank, dank meme groups. Oh, yeah. There are tons of them. Oh man. I'm going to go look there. Cause I feel or, like. Yeah. Or if you hit any of the, well, really any of the libertarian pages, I mean, there's just like meme after meme after meme on these because people are trying to get the word out about it. But I, I mean, here's the thing. The presidential commission is run by Republicans and Democrats, like former party officers and hi, Mabel. <laughs> and oh my goodness, and former so elected officials for both parties. So there is no way, no way that they are going to allow anyone else. <laughs> I know. Oh my God, that cat. She no. can be so sweet at times. She is. However, I, I was just thinking it was funny. I was looking in my Facebook and you had just sent me a picture of her pooping. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly one minute before we went live because my home office um, is a shared office with her bathroom. Well, you know, she yeah. wants to be close to you to keep an eye on you throughout the and day. So, of course, yeah, she, <laughs> she had to poop. Oh. How, how thoughtful of her. Oh, and then uh, Michelle says, hi, Mabel. <laughs> they say, hi, Mabel. She's so famous. Yes. Yeah. I think cats, they just know when we're doing shows and stuff. Every so often, they got to make an appearance. Yes, they do. They do. Man, you're getting headbutts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I know. I'm getting lots of bunting and nudging and oh, my God. She's like, I love you. That's going to be a distracting show. Because, I, I mean, for me, maybe you too, because you have the cat right there. But I'm like, oh, cat. Oh, I can't <laughs> I think anything this, else. Now brain, brain is only on cat. <laughs> I know. It, it, it's really, I'm an easy person to please. You put kitties in front of me and some wine off the side. And you're like, yeah, it was a good day. Oh, my, oh my God. God cat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's uh, violent. Uh, there, I'll get her. No! Oh, oh. Claws, claws, so many claws. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is where Kara lost her leg. <laughs> yes, this is where I bled to death during the show. So sorry, it was nice working with you. From claws. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But... Both important things. Mabel totally ways. derailed it. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I was well. like, it was going pretty well. It but yes, it was. I it was, was actually looking up before I saw Mabel. Is there um, looking for memes? But I yeah. don't know. there's got to be one that'll show up. There's really good memes on this site. Oh. <laughs> not it. Okay, sorry. I just like I'm like so distractible today. That's how there's going down down a meme rabbit hole. Meme, meme, meme. Like, meme. So I, I've seen this question come up periodically, and so far the answer is still zero. And yeah. the question that keeps getting asked, and I see it getting asked about once a week um, in the delegates group. And the, the question keeps ask, getting asked, has any in-person... Libertarian Party delegate 
come down with COVID. Yeah. Has, and the answer is still zero. Well, good. Why did they want it? <laughs> no, but I mean, people are just checking in going, did it happen? And it hasn't. I haven't no. heard of anybody. I mean, there are some people who are sick before. Yeah. There are people who are sick before and then didn't go. Yeah. Um, and we had a delegate, an, an at home delegate who became ill. Um, but no, we haven't, you know, and I mean, I think the number one, the event was well done it really and, was. you know, the venue knew what to do. And I think if you're in a good venue, they know how to handle things because the, you know, yes, they push distancing. Um, but the big thing was the ventilation. Yeah. You they could, had a thing pumping you it. You could feel the updraft, like, <laughs> So they had an air exchange going on that was very robust. And it's the same with airlines. So airlines are exchanging cabin air, like the entire volume of cabin air every three minutes. Wow. So they have really pumped that up as well. And I think that's one of the areas of safety on COVID and just, you know, viruses in general that isn't getting enough attention which is ventilation yeah they focus so much on masks but they don't ever talk about the quality of the air in the room anyway exactly having that airflow you know having a good air exchange and you know i wish i wish that was you know i wish there was more attention on that Mm -hmm. um but you know we also have we've had about a month now of our president and vice president on their bus tour and they've been hosting outdoor events. And on Monday, Jess Mears presented on how to do an event in a time of COVID. And they talked about, you know, doing an outdoor event. So if you're doing a political event, you know, but these are also good things if you're doing an event in general, even a family event, whatever. And they were talking about what are the best practices, that kind of thing. And they were talking about, you know, really number one is if you can host it outside or as much of it as you can outside as possible. And then it doesn't seem to be a problem. And again, it's that ventilation thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So breathing everybody else's air. Exactly. And so those events have gone really well and the press coverage has been exceptional. And the press coverage has talked about not just what the candidate is talking about, but what an awesome job they're doing with that event. And then they've used that coverage to then talk to cities that they're planning to have an event in. And even cities that are just like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to allow you to do that. And then they show that good press coverage and they show their plan and, you know, how they have everything very well thought out. And then the city's like, oh, okay then. And so they haven't really had a city turn them down. Oh, that's, that's interesting then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and our candidates are still out there. Um, let's see. Thursday, Spike is in Oakland, California at an event. Uh, Joe is up in Alaska right now. So Thursday, she has a meet and greet in Ketchikan, Alaska. And then on Friday, she's going to be in Juneau, Alaska. And on Saturday, Spike is going to be in Eugene, Oregon on his bus tour. Um, Joe is driving and flying. So on Saturday, she'll be in Anchorage. And then Spike will be, uh, let's see, Portland, Oregon on Sunday. And Joe will be in Wasilla, Alaska on Sunday. So, I mean, the, the, bus tour and the other tours are still going um you know they're being met with some really great enthusiastic crowds cool um and a lot of the people who are coming to the crowd are coming to these events are people who are not normally politically active but they're excited about this campaign i think it's very exciting yeah can i Show this for a second. Um, Do you have the Batwoman shirt? 
um, the Batwoman. So Joe Jorgensen got bit by a bat, right? So for those of you who don't know, and she survived and became Batwoman. But yes. I, I got to look up that one because I remember seeing it and it was awesome. Michelle, you should pop the the URL for getting that. Yeah, if you have it, then like, it's so much easier than me stopping and going, where is it? Exactly. But yeah, and and getting, having the bat incident, which, you know, so she had the bat incident and she was on the bus tour. And so she had to still get the rabies shots and arrange for the rabies shots while she's going to different cities. And oh my still God. And then yeah. have it meet her in a different city. Yeah. That's nuts. A badass. She is a badass. I mean, because me, I would be like in the fetal position crying all the time. I would be too, because don't they do like about a hundred, uh, like shots in your belly or something? I don't know. You know, I so that's what they did when I was little, but now I think they do them close to the site, and I think it's like three or seven, depending. Oh my god, seven! So it's way, <laughs> way, way less than my poor mom. She had to take me every day to get my to get a rabies shot. Oh my God. So you actually got bit. What, what did you get bit by when you were younger? So I got bit by a dog. We were at, I think world's a fun. Well, that wasn't fun. <laughs> no. And there was a stray dog there and I went to kiss it on its nose. And, went, and the stray dog was like, what the hell are you doing? And it bit my face. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the problem is like when you love animals, you just want to smooch them. Yeah, and it's just like and I went in for the smooch. They don't all like it. I know that's true. I know I Mabel. Know the dog was like, "What the hell?" I will warn people. Mabel is all like, "So yeah, if you oh. try to get in for the kiss." Oh no! Sad her- news. Oh no, Doctor. Oh, that is very sad. Oh, I'm bummed. Our condolences, definitely to Joe. Oh, that just took. Oh, I know, that's very sad. I can't believe it. That's oh, dang it! That's gotta be hard. It's freaking I know. Here. <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna have to read all about that because I'm my brain's all stopped now. Oh, <laughs> what's the? Oh, Paige just posted. A release from, oh, from our chair, Joe Bishop Henchman. Oh, okay. I'll have to look that up. Oh, da. That Come is me. very sad. It is. Imagine. So, talking about Joe Bishop Henchman, our chair, one of the things that he's doing that I love, and I really, really like this, because this is something um, that kind of fits with what we do, is, so he is recognizing an activist of the month. Ooh, that's and cool. so his activist of the month for September is Casey Daly. Yay! Very nice. So I'll I'll read what he wrote about Casey. He said on October eighth, libertarians across the country participated in over one hundred fifty convoys in all fifty states to promote "Let Her Speak." Cars drove around parade style to become mobile billboards, getting on the ground community attention for Joe Jorgensen. The hashtag became a top trender on Twitter. Local news covered the convoys and we reached lots of people who had never before heard of Joe Jorgensen. And many of you participated, but not all of you may know the person that made it happen is Casey Daly. Hmm. Casey lives in Texas and she doesn't hold a party office. But in spite of that, he said, well, maybe because of that, she didn't stop in her vision of an event large enough to get noticed nationally, but small enough to directly impact neighbors and help promote local candidates as well. And then in Casey's words, I did not have resources, funds, connections, or experience in politics. But many grassroots supporters liked the idea and volunteered to help me bring the Let Her Speak convoys to life. The landing page, video, graphics, flyers, releases, Facebook resources, and the Convoy Finder database were created with 100% volunteer support. A step-by-step checklist of instructions and training video made the complex web of information and materials easy to digest. 
Very cool. <laughs> that is spectacular. I love it. So I love this. And those of you that are not following Joe Bishop Henchman, you should do so. Um, he's doing a really good job of keeping libertarians appraised of news that's happening um, in the Libertarian Party. And I love that he is doing this activist of the month. That is wonderful. What a great thing to do. And it, it, it is. kind of highlights some of our great people in the party who may not be like always up at the top and in the exactly. front. Exactly. And it just shows it like that shows a libertarian ethic, which is um, we're not about like this real strong hierarchy. It is, do you see a need? Okay. Go for it. Do it. Go do it. Like, Try it. Happen. You yeah. don't have to wait for permission. No. I mean, sometimes you do. Like, I can't just go and say, I'm going to be in charge today of everything because I don't want that either. But <laughs> but you could be in charge of something you do. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, but how how is that different from other parties? I kind of wonder, you know, is this, you have to get permission. You have to always get permission. Yep. Yes, it has to be a sanctioned event. It's very. I figured. It's just so such a different mindset. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it is very cool. And, you know, sometimes it takes activists and volunteers a little while to acclimate to that once they join the LP. Um, because they're like, well, why isn't the party doing this? And the answer usually is, oh, well, do you want to do that? Go for it. Go do it. And they're like, well, well, wait, what's the process? And we're like, I don't know. What would you like the process to be? Exactly. Now your project. Go do it. Yep. We are libertarian. We do what needs to be done. We do what we want. It's like, I do, I do it all. I do what I want. <laughs> yes. That's, that's definitely um, Mabel's motto. <laughs> yes, she is. She'll stomp across you if you don't give her away. Is she looking at you right now? I'm just like. <laughs> no. Okay. No. She beat feet out. No. She, you know, she pooped. She was a pest. Her work is done. Now yep, she's, now she can go now she's probably going to go bother, bother Tracy. <laughs> Do her rounds. Make sure everyone's taken care of. Yeah. She'll chew on his headset. Oh, my God. Oh, we, you know, like cats, uh, we've gone through so many headsets in our household because we have that little boy cat and he just likes to snip little wires. So that's a joy. <laughs> so many headsets. Yes. I could be retired by now, <laughs> but no, got to pay for those headsets. Ah, oh, so yes, I think that sounds like we're, you know, we got some pretty good things going. I, I mean, like I they just started like a few months ago Yeah, with Joe Bishop Henchman and he's already doing so much really cool stuff. I, I'm really impressed. Yes. Yep. Yep, and they're coming to Minnesota, so. Yes, I'm going to be like all starstruck and everything because we've got all these, you know, the big name, big name libertarians coming into town. And I'm, I'm like little old me going, hey, guys. You're not little old you. You're the Liberty Librarian. I am. I'll put on like my Liberty Librarian cape and <laughs> like swoop in. It'll give me more confidence. They'll think I'm crazy, but it'll work. <laughs> you know, you would have to be pretty far out there to really stand out for yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> I kind of wonder if it would be like reverse stuff, though. It'd be like, um, I think we should have a law for that. You know, say something. <laughs> and people are like, who are you? <laughs> Why are you here? We need more laws. Yeah. I think we, we could laws. just tax the hell out of everyone. I think that should be a real. Felony. <laughs> that should be a felony people should be made examples of yes and if you were a nice person you just would have stayed home anyway exactly well you know <laughs> taxes are the the price we pay for having a civilized society it's that so also true. might get you a or too I know I was just thinking like what could you do to get kicked out of a libertarian party <laughs> those are a few things <laughs> That not, not the party, but that like, might get you a side eye. They go, who invited this chick? <laughs> we don't know. Yes, she just showed up. 
I heard there was free booze. <laughs> right. oh, speaking of free booze. <laughs> yeah. So in our town, Tracy and I were driving back home. When was that? Yesterday. Yesterday. And there was a Trump rally going on in our park in town. Oh, near where you live. And it it was small, but it looked highly organized. And they had an entire table set up with different wines, and they were doing like a wine tasting. And I was like, hey, I could go to that. <laughs> maybe we should go. <laughs> I'm very interested in what you have to say. Right. Give me that wine. Write to your newsletter. <laughs> Dude, I get Trump stuff. I, I'm sure I'm on somebody's list. So they'd be like, well, she checks out. Right. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. It's just the worst timeline. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, oh, wine. Hmm. I know that I, I'd be the worst. I'd be I, I'd like get tied to some horrible organization. I'm like, they had free booze. And yeah. During those. <laughs> yeah. So instead of being lured down into a sewer with a red balloon, <laughs> yeah, it's like it. <laughs> I could be lured into a Trump rally with wine. <laughs> yeah. Like a lamb to the slaughter. They'd be like, ha, ha, ha. here's some wine, Kara. You'd be like, ooh. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> what kind <yeah>. is it? <laughs> yeah. And then they and they also tell me, and there's cheese. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, like, if there had been cheese, that would have just done it. I know it, right? They're like cheese and wine tasting. They're like, hmm. I'd have been there. I don't this care. Pretty classy. I think I yeah. could do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, then also last night, so we got home and we we watched Cobra Kai. It's on my list of things to watch. I'm you haven't so, watched it yet. It, it, I've watched like clips of it, but my husband, like we have certain shows that we have to watch together and everything else. I binge like a mofo, but that's one of the ones that he's like, we got to watch that together. And I'm like, okay, how about now? How about now? How about we, now? <laughs> we binged an entire season last night. Oh man. That's we watched cool. all of season one in one night. That's awesome. So it's that it's that good. Yeah. Are there, are so we, we watched one kind of episode. Thing? So we watched one episode and it was good, you know, but it was okay. Um, it was very enjoyable. And Tracy cool. was like, Oh, okay, yeah, I suppose we can watch another one. Okay, we got to the end of the second episode. The binge was on. And you're like, like we never oh. stop. <laughs> and there were always points where we watched it and we were like, Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Honestly, I, after seeing the trailer for it, I was just way more excited because it looks like they're both kind of bad guys and they're both kind of good guys. So do you remember the video that went around a few years ago and it was like super, super viral and it was a reexamination of the plot of the first karate kid. Yeah. And the premise of it was that um. Oh God! What? I'm I'm blanking on the Karate Kid's first name. Oh, I don't know Ralph Macchio, but it's some. Yeah. Like, so it, so the whole premise was that he was actually the villain. He kind of seems and like. So it. they 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 cut together, you know, sections of the movie, but from the point of the view of, um. The main protagonist. I think it's yeah. Tommy, right? Tommy, I think, yeah. And from his point of view, which was um, you know, things are going things are going fine. Um, him and his girlfriend have a fight, but you know, he's trying to work it out with her. Um, and then this new guy moves to town and moves in on his girlfriend and he and his friends go down there and they're giving him a little crap, but really they're, you know, they haven't really done anything yet. And he starts a fight with them. It's because, true. Because like, he you does. It and you're just like, everything that ba- bad that happens is he because throws the first punch. something. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, and what do they tell you? Like if somebody hits you, you have to defend yourself. Right. And so, and he does throw the first punch. And so then they're talking about, yeah. And then he's like, and I don't even see this guy for a couple of months. And then there's a school party and 
he like turns a hose on me at the party. I'm like in the bathroom minding my own business and he turns a hose on me. And so my friends and I go out there to kick his butt because what the heck he turned the hose on me. And then this adult comes out and beats us up, which is true. It is. All of it's true. Like adults shouldn't be beating up little kids. Right. So, so it, it frames. So this series is framed on that ambiguity of perspective. Yeah, because I mean... Because depending on the perspective you have, what you see, how things are presented to you, who's who's the hero and who's the villain? Yeah, because really, if you look at it the, the way you just said it, Tommy would have been the hero. So? It would have been like a bittersweet one because he lost in the end. But he's like, this guy really... But then later, if you tie those together... It seems like there's this opportunity for growth for both characters. Yeah, although, so the show takes place 34 years later. Okay, so. Present day. Yes, present day. Oh my God. (laughs) And it shows them, like, where their lives are at right now. And so, you know, like, Tommy's like, I mean, he, he is just crashed and burned. He yeah. is not living his best life. I'll just tell you that. Um, and then Ralph's character, I mean, he's got like this, you know, huge car dealership and the beautiful wife and the perfect children and the wonderful house and, and all that kind of stuff. And everything's just like, you know, Snow White, like, right. Um, but the whole first season it swings back and forth between it, it tempts you. Yeah. Every episode tempts you into saying who's the villain and who's the hero. And then through that episode, it upends it every time. Oh, and it's all about your perspective because they point out how characters can't see what's happening when they're not interacting with each other. Right. Right. They can't see that. We, as the audience, we can see it, but they can't. And so they can only see little snips. They can only see what's presented to them and it can be extremely misleading. So you like one character as an adult kicks the crap out of a bunch of kids. And you're like, you, I mean, one of the other characters is like, what the hell? That's the most awful thing ever. And he gets arrested for that. But he was protecting another minor. So is, is he it, a hero or is, is he a villain? Is he a villain or is he um, stopping bullies? You know, I right. mean, it depends on how you look at everything. It's your perspective. And it's also what you can see and what you can't see. And I think you, if you sh- like look at yourself, it's really hard to ever paint yourself as a villain. I know a lot of people, they make excuses for things in their lives that they blame on other people, even though they've yeah. done bad things themselves. But um, putting those two perspectives together, I think can give like a clear picture of what actually happened. And that I think is going to be really interesting. So, it is super interesting. Is it really interesting? I can't wait to see it now. It is super interesting. And, you know, and it's also neat because the, like the characters themselves are kind of exploring, what have I done with my life? Am I on the right track? Like, am I doing the right thing? Yeah. Well, you know, I, mean, I think everybody goes through that. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of this neat exploration of all that. And I, I'm making it sound way more boring than it is because it's no, still can't. Be. It's still can't be. It's still funny. It's still sweet. It's still charming. Um, you can tell that they love the Karate Kid movies. Like they love the Karate Kid movies. Um, so fun. They understand what made the Karate Kid movies sweet and wonderful and enduring and all that kind of stuff. And you know they they tie in flashbacks from the old movies because let me tell you these two men um i don't care how successful or unsuccessful they look they are still carrying so much baggage from that summer oh yeah so much baggage from that one summer that it changed their whole lives and it is still affecting them and it's affecting their judgment it's giving them a huge bias 
But while I was watching this whole season, it made me think of um, when we have events happen in the meeting, like what happened in Kenosha. Yeah. Both events that happen in Kenosha, um, the event that happened in Portland, all of that. And when we're looking at, because we're always looking for who's the hero and who's the villain. Yeah. We want them in these neat little categories. And it really depends on your perspective. What do you see and what you don't see? And the other thing is, we also have to remember that just like these these characters in this series, that they can only see what they see. They can't see everything else that we know, right? Yeah, because you're like a presented to them. omniscient um, like viewer. You know right. everything. So they're reacting in real time with extremely limited information. Yeah. And it's they're like making the, good decisions, you, bad decisions, and all that kind of stuff. But we're judging them based on our bias, right? Right. We all have bias. We all do. We want someone to be the hero and the villain, and life is rarely that cut and dry. No. Rarely. People do stupid things and are nasty to each other sometimes, and they don't intend to be, and sometimes they do. You, you sometimes it's do. just a screwed up situation. Yeah, you're like, like oh, I meant it this way. <laughs> just screw it up. So, it, you know, and then and they have very limited information. They can only react on what they see. Um, but but we're judging these situations, and we're trying to pigeonhole them, and we're trying to make them something they're not. Exactly. So, it's been extremely interesting. I mean, it was just nostalgic fun watching this. I love that. Nothing else. Watch it for that. But when you watch it, watch it and think about how your perspective can change. Even though the facts of the situation are the facts. But depending on your point of view, your bias and your perspective, you will come to a completely different conclusion. That's right. And who's to say who's right and who's wrong on that? It's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're making me want to see this show. <laughs> and it's amazing. They deserve their Emmy nominations. They oh, absolutely yeah. do. The writing is fantastic. The acting is way better than the acting in the movies. Well, they were young. I mean, this was getting to be like over 30 years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. But, oh, my God, really good. And, you know, I wonder what it's like for somebody who always saw, uh, God, I can't remember his name, the Ralph Macchio character, the party kid. Like, I know. And no one watching this is helping us out with a name. No. I mean, like, waiting. But um, um, it's uh, Leroy. No. <laughs> I'm just making up names. Um, but, like, the, to think of him as not the perfect good guy in this show, I think, is actually kind of a good way to take it. Yeah. Because nobody, I mean, especially kids, like, you know, sometimes we're, like, we're all a little coarse and weird when we're kids. And we grow up and hopefully we learn from our mistakes and get better. But some people don't. <laughs> and it would be interesting to see that. Daniel. Daniel. Okay. I was like, is it Kevin? Am I close? Roger? <laughs> Porky pig? I don't think so. No. Um. <laughs> yes. And Cobra Kai ends up being reborn. Well, I mean, I've seen that much from the trailers. I'm not trying to, don't spoil it too much for me, but I mean. No. It's pretty apparent because they have like the logo on everything and you can buy the t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. But you know, there again, really interesting retake on, because, you know, in the, in the Karate Kid, when they were talking about the, you know, the three mottos of Cobra Kai, which was strike first, strike hard, no mercy, right? right? And you were like, oh my God, that's so awful. It's so mean. And yet when he's teaching his students, although things may get a little off track, but when he's applying that to life, it's actually not bad yeah strike first um like take opportunities when they they come to you yeah you know not always 
Look, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait for things because, you know, you have one life and, you know, especially if it's a good opportunity, you should go for it. Yeah. And the strike hard was about give it your all. Yeah. If you're going to do it, give it your all. Yeah. Put everything you got into it. Don't, don't be wimpy about it. Like go all in in everything you do. And then the no mercy, he was talking about, you know, life isn't going to give you mercy. Yeah. You know, life throws all this crap at you. So don't just take it and don't, you know, don't curl up and, you know, give no mercy right back. Like give life no mercy either. Just, you know. Yeah. Go 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 out there and and do it. And you know, that way it's totally different. Yeah. It's like, but again, uh, that's that perspective thing, right? Yeah. And, and you know, like they're, when they show them in a movie, it's always like a little slice of the life. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they it was more like um, what you call like black and white villains and heroes in the original Karate Kid movie. But it's also the target audience is like high school, young adults, that kind of thing. You know, it's not it wasn't quite as much for the. The old, older, <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, can I get an amen? <laughs> it's like, okay, amen. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's neat to see that they, as they grow up, their stories grow up. And I always yeah. thought, like, it, with books, it's kind of neat, too. Like, you get characters like Harry Potter, even, you know, and you see the first story, and it's definitely, like, a little kid's story. And by the yeah. end, it, they're having, like, young adult problems, and you're like, Wow. They've changed so much and their characters have too. I mean, you wouldn't be the same as you are like when you're 18, like really yes. what a boring person you would be. Well, okay. So I will, I will give you a hint. So when you and your husband are going to watch it, yep. if you want to score points with your husband, yeah, what's that? go out and get those little bottles of banquet beer. Oh, because it features prominently. Oh, and and like okay, I, I will go buy that ahead of time, and then he'll I'll, I'll go. Oh, hold on a second, we'll put this on. I'm just gonna give you one of these. He'd be like, "What the heck?" And he's like, "I don't normally." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, just have it." And then all of a sudden, he'll show up on the screen. He'd be like, oh, "Yes, good idea." <laughs> I like bonus, uh, like little insight things. Yes. Well, we're going to start wrapping up, but if you are watching and if you have, we always do this thing at the end where we do one awesome thing. Um, So if you want to share one awesome thing that happened this week, something that was wonderful, it can be big, small, whatever, something that made you really happy, um, share your one awesome thing and we will read it or share it. And then Heather and I share ours as well. Oh my goodness. What is our awesome things? Mm-hmm. Well, God, Kara. I, it was just like, oh. I was Mabel's like, oh. awesome thing is she got sushi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and is. Mabel totally would be in Cobra Kai. She would. And she would probably be leading leading the dojo. Because <laughs> she's like, she's got tooth and claw, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, let's see. I'm trying to think of what good stuff. Um, this week, I am really happy that I um, I'm like, who is that? I just saw that. Yes, I know. I'm to, like, whoa, wait. You have to look up and see who it is. Um, I derailed myself. Hmm. Okay. Do you want me to go and then you can. Yes, because okay. my I'm off today. So off. So my and then you can check who that user is. Yeah, I'll do that. So my awesome thing was my birthday parties, plural. I just, I had a really, really good time. You know, it was nice to see my family and, and it was almost my whole family, not my son, which is kind of a bummer. Um, And my sister's husband had to take care of an issue at their house. Uh, But pretty much everyone else, my family was able to make it. And that, that's increasingly rare, you know. Everyone kind of has their own things going on and you get busy and, but it was just fantastic seeing everyone and seeing so many of my friends and being able to hang out with them because, you know, there's not a lot of, not a lot of hanging out with people these days. Oh, I know. 
people. Well, that was one of my favorite things was just getting to see see you, get to celebrate and have a good time. Um, yeah, I kind of like this week. You know, other good things is I finished doing uh, over uh, like I, I did the intro and the outro for the show. So I'm really excited because it's taken me forever to like figure out how to do it, first of all, and then like to make it work. So I feel confident and I think it's pretty. If you like it, let me know. Um, and uh, oh, she says joking. OK, so Laura Chancy Lane was the one who said she was oh. and then she says I just joking. Wait a minute. You, you're playing with my mind. Okay. And let's see. Okay. So, Kay Cameron. Yay! Started with her new TTH Tuesday, Thursday family this week. Full 40-hour paycheck now. Yay! To getting paid. Get the money. November 3rd is coming. Election. <laughs> I agree. It's always nice to have election day. Things may change. Well, I hope so. For the better, we need a good, we need a good, this year needs to go out on a good note. I think uh, that's all I've got to say. Yes. Yes, um, it does. Well, you know, with the beginning of school, it's always a little crazy, but I think um, I, I my brain will get right back on track and then I'll be all excited about the election more because every day we're getting closer. I'm looking to oh, see. Oh, oh, my mom. Here's your mom. Yes. School started today for first grader and a third grader. Celebrating another birthday on Labor Day. Yeah, so my granddad, Connor, will be his oh, birthday. My. Oh, yeah. So, yay. So, that is a good thing. That's pretty freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yay, good news. It is good news. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for your, for this week. Yes. Um, I'm going to put the outro on. I'm just going to mentally prepare everyone. Um, okay. I'm excited. You, you lady, you, you hang out. Don't run away right away, okay. but I will, I will, I will get this. Okay. So I'm, I feel like I put these expectations high. Okay. Here we go. Expectations. See you next week, guys. We love you. <laughs> Bye. Here we go.